Walk into any grocery store and you will see employees at some point in time replenishing shelves with items that are low. But what would happen if employees were told to order materials every week on Tuesday regardless of what customers purchased, expiration dates, or regard for inventory? You would probably end up with a lot of inventory, a lot of spoiled food, tons of tied up capital, and quite a bit of wasted space. In this lecture, you will learn what a pull system is, what a push system is, and why both push and pull systems are a very necessary element of a lean organization. To start things off, let's define the term pull system. A pull system is a technique used to produce only what has demand attached to it. Pull systems are also used to help replace and control inventory items which may have been taken to fulfill demand. Let's look at an example of a pull system using a grocery store model to help us understand this concept a little bit better. A customer comes into a grocery store. They buy a box of cereal. They take the box of cereal off the shelf to go to the cashier and pay for the cereal. When the cashier scans the cereal, it notifies a worker that one item of inventory has been purchased off the shelf. The worker takes a box from the buffer of inventory which is generally placed in the back of a store and fills the shelf again. Now this is a very simple example of a pull system that is facilitated by a trigger. The trigger is often referred to as a Kanban. The important idea that you need to understand is that items are pulled by the customer through the system. Remember, a pull system is one method you use to manage and replenish the amount of inventory in a system. However, it is not the ideal. Looking back at our supermarket example, it becomes obvious that this method of control helps keep inventory to a minimum, but the absolute perfect replenishment system would be created with true one-piece flow. We will look at flow in a later lecture. This concept of pulling based on a customer's need is quite the opposite of the traditional push system. In a push system, materials or services are sent downstream based on a predetermined schedule. Items are then produced and moved away from work centers or manufacturing operations when they are complete. As we learned earlier, the just-in-time system takes a different approach by producing items and services based on the actual need of customers. This type of system has many different benefits associated with it. Mainly, it provides a method of controlling production levels, especially in between processes that are disconnected. Pull systems also help facilitate instructions to workers who are upstream. This effective method of communication provides a transparent communication vehicle ultimately eliminating the need for a predetermined schedule. Last but not least, using a pull type system prevents excessive inventory and overproduction, which as we learned in our waste overview, creates efficiency, frees up capital, and increases the capacity of your organization. The benefits of a pull system are not just operational though. As lot sizes begin to decrease, wait times lower, and quality problems become much more obvious. As we mentioned in our discussion on the waste of inventory, defects, overprocessing, and many other forms of waste are hidden when there are excessive inventory levels. When a pull system is used to help guide the just-in-time pillar, Buffers are kept to a minimum, so when there's a problem, process improvements, 
and corrections must be quickly implemented. Up to this point, you have heard about pull systems, push systems, and continuous flow. So if a pull system is not as effective as continuous flow, when would we use a pull system? As we mentioned earlier, pull systems are used to both control and facilitate the flow of production and information between processes, but only if continuous flow is not practical. Some examples you might select a pull system like Kanban are when cycle times between processes are not close enough or have a large amount of variation. You might use a pull system if facilities are disconnected or two processes require some form of transportation to connect the flow. Another reason might be when a process has very poor quality or low yield percentages. Let's look at a very basic example of a Kanban before we move on. A customer comes into our store, they purchase five items, we withdraw the five items to sell to the customer. This is triggered by a move Kanban. Now we need to replenish these five pieces, so a production Kanban for five pieces triggers the upstream process to produce the five pieces and replenish our inventory. There are many different types of Kanban that can be used based on the need and circumstances, but this example will help you start to understand the overarching concept that the goal is to avoid producing anything that does not have demand associated with it. Nobody says it better than Mr. Rother and Mr. Shook in their book, Learning to See. Flow where you can, but pull where you must. Well, that wraps up our introduction to pull systems. Remember, push, pull, and flow all have their place in business. As you advance in your experience and understanding of these three systems, you will learn when each of the systems is appropriate to use. Let's end with one more quote from Dr. Liker's book, The Toyota Way. The challenge is to develop a learning organization that will find ways to reduce the number of Kanban and thereby reduce and eliminate the inventory buffer. Remember, the Kanban is an organized system of inventory buffers, and according to Mr. Ono, inventory is waste. Whether it is in a push system or a pull system, inventory is waste. Until next time, my friends, keep on improving, and we will keep on giving you solutions that ignite your power.